Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry, and I am so thrilled to share with you this year's theme for Let's Paint Folk Art One Stroke Hometown. How does that sound? Hometown. I want you to think about everything that's in a hometown, from the barns to the churches and everything in between. So every month, we thought if you paint 12 different projects, you can make a gallery wall like we have right here to share with you. And today, we are going to put our first piece in our gallery wall, and it is going to say, home is my happy place, right? So let me tell you what we're gonna do that makes us really wonderful. I love One Stroke Flowers. I'm the creator of One Stroke Painting. The Folk Art One Stroke Painting teaches you how to do petal by petal on worksheets so that you can paint the flowers like I did. And then what we're gonna do on here is do all kinds of fine detail with shadow leafing and how to letter. Lots of fun that we're gonna have in class today and every month. So this could be the focus center of this wall that we're painting, and I'm excited to have you join me. If you would like to have the kit to paint along with me, I invite you to go to platonline.com forward slash less paint, and the kit's right there for you, all right? So I'm excited to go paint. Are you? Let's get going. We're going to the studio and start. I thought a great way to start our gallery wall was with a pretty wooden plate with beautiful flowers, which are my favorite, as most of you know, and pretty trailing green leaves and vines. And also to set this off perfect, home is my happy place. And I bet it's yours too. So let's get going and let me share with you how to get this nice mixed color for the background. And we're going to do a lot of mixing as we do our projects, which is fun for you to learn how to do that easier. And it also, um, there's some little tricks to make it work best for you. One of them is I'm going to use Wicker White. These are our multi-surface colors. I love them. They have a wonderful sealer in them. And so it does a lush finish on this. Um, when you paint base coat your wood in your projects and you paint with it also. So what I want you to see is that when we're mixing, the first thing that needs to happen is you gotta kind of gauge what size plate this is. And as I'm mixing the coats that are gonna go on here, I need to have enough paint. So it's very difficult or it can be a little more difficult for you to sit there and remix and remix and match the colors. So just take that into consideration when you're uh, coming up with the colors that you want as you're mixing. And so this is the licorice. And now we're going to put licorice in here. And what I've learned over my years of mixing paint is that I would start with too much of the darker color with my white, make a big mess and it was way too dark and I needed to keep adding white. It wasn't a mess, it was just way darker than I wanted it, but I would almost unload an entire bottle of wicker white to get back to the shade I really wanted. All right, so the best trick with this is to pick up a little bit of licorice and start mixing this in. Now I'm using my three quarter inch brush to get our mix going here. And sometimes I use a palette knife, whatever is easier for you, but I'm going to take and blend this together and see it's a little lighter than I want, which is fine because I can add a little bit more. I think I have a, a good mix or volume of paint here, but I guess we'll see when I start painting, right? So I'm getting the color a little bit better over here because I'm working it out of the paintbrush, but there's not enough in here. Now, so you can test this and by going over here and see if that's the color you want. And I'm gonna get a teeny bit more. You see just a little bit makes a difference. All right. Now, if it's, if it's in between, we do have a medium gray mix, but this is in between that still gray color and medium gray, I think. All right, there we go. 
Now we're going to take our paintbrush. I want to take some of the heaviness off of this and I'm going to start base coating. Now what's going to happen is if you feel there are usually, even though this is a really nice piece of wood, that you're usually going to have um, a little bit of fuzzy feeling. And when we start base coating this and we get it all nicely coated for the first coat, what's going to happen, look right there, that, that licorice is coming up a little bit. But what's going to happen is when it dries, it will have raised the grain and we're going to take a little sanding block and sand some of that off before we start doing our painting. Um, we sand it, then we put a second coat, and then we come back. And on the second coat, you don't need the sand because you've already raised that grain on the first coat. All right, now a couple things about base coating. With this grain going this way, I did find that I wanted to go up and down and then long ways over here for the whole length. But sometimes at first I'm going around in a circle, but you saw how in the center I was going up and down first. So let's go all into the edges, back and forth. Now the most important thing is you make it through the whole first coat if you do have to mix more paint. Now what I like to do out here is go around all right, I will touch up my edges and then I can go back and follow the grain if I want to. All right, it might not even be noticeable, but I was always taught to stay with the grain when I'm doing my base coating. Now you can see there's little spots where it, it really, the wood does show through and it really needs to be covered. I'm going to continue base coating mine and you should stop your video at this point and base coat yours and have it all ready so we can paint together. Let me tell you one of the things that's wonderful about our kit this year. It is so awesome that we have pages, just a bundle of wonderful words and phrases that are going to make your beautiful gallery on that wall great because you're going to put words of, of encouragement and words that mean a lot to you. These beautiful phrases. The one I picked for this plate is home is my happy place. And I love all my children and grandchildren and what it means to be in that home. There's gathering and, and togetherness and blessings. And we've made it really easy for you in this kit. So when we're doing this, there's two sides here so that we could get more phrases in there for you. And what we have done is we've made it possible for you to take and trace right here onto tracing paper. All right. So this is just craft tracing paper. And I lined up a piece that would, I cut it first so it kind of fit in the center of the plate. And I lined up, um, on a straight edge, make sure everything's straight. It'll be easier to place it. And one of the things that um, Miss Chris shared with me is that if you take just this line here, even though you don't have a line there, but if you want to keep your letters in a row so you're not sliding down, I would put a piece of uh, painter's tape here. And then I'm just going to go right here along this line with my Identa pen. And I have a small tip and a large tip. So I'm going to make sure to use a small tip. And then I'm going to line right up with that ruler and put the line on my tracing. Because then what happens is I don't want to mess up my beautiful patterns that we have. So what I want to do is have these that I save, put them in a folder and I can go back to it because you're going to want to use this many other times, even just single words out of here, like happy. Okay. So you're going to take this here. You're going to trace it. Make sure you have the top and bottom lines. Just, this just makes it easier for you. And I've learned so much about doing lettering because that's one of the things that isn't always my strong note. And this made it possible for me to actually do it. And it's fun and you can customize it just like you want. It's going to really benefit our kit. So we've got that there for you. And this is what I wanted you to see. Here's my finished piece. Uh, it's all dried, base coated, my finished base coated piece. 
It's all dry and ready. I've sanded in between and I even uh, put a second coat on mine. So you wanna just knock off those, um, those fuzziness that you might find on there from the first coat when it was dry and then you put your second coat and you're ready to go. But what I wanted you to see is that when I lay this in here, it's really important at the beginning to kind of lay here. You don't have to put it on now. We're going to do it later. But I want you to see how much space that I have and where I'm going to lay out my design. So the first thing I decided as I was designing this is what phrase and then where I'm going to place it, where I'm going to go in the center, whether I'm going to move it where it's not very much in the center or on the edge of the plate. So I'm going to come way down here and realize how much space I have. All right. So I can sometimes even put a piece of chalk and I don't mind if some of the, I'm going to draw a piece of um, line there with your chalk. And I don't mind some of the trailing leaves and vines to go down into the homeward, or I might even add those later, but that's just gonna help me gauge where I'm gonna start. And another key element inside your kit that is gonna be great while you're painting with us each month is reusable teaching guides. We've made reusable teaching guides for every month, and this is January's. It's Home is My Happy Place. You have a picture of what you're actually doing, so there, it's easy to find. Then also, we're going to have our folk art multi-surface colors that we're going to use, which are also in your kit. So you need to pull out your colors for your projects and your floating medium, and then the one-stroke brushes that you're going to have to use for this project. And we actually use used all four in this project. And then the thing I want to call out so that you see is that every flower that I have painted on my project is stroked out so that you can stroke it, practice it, and it's very important very important to practice because then you get a comfort level and then you're ready to go. So after you've watched me on the lesson, it's good to go back and stop the video as you practice and get comfortable with that flower and then start going again uh, after you've put it onto your piece. So let's go back over here and see the second thing I want to share with you about these strokes that we're going to do. I've stroked every color here so that you see the blend as we double load and this technique one stroke is a lot of double loading so you're going to have a three-quarter brush here but this is where you find out the brush usually number one everywhere here says what brush first so this says three-quarter you can see how wide the three-quarter is and then the double loading would be double load the wicker white and dioxazine purple so that's going to happen all, around, all over, and it's coded. Each reusable teaching guide is coded. So as you stroke on here with the color after you've got the blend and um, practiced a little bit, the key thing that you need to remember on your coded reusable teaching guides to keep them fresh and good so you can keep using them is I fold a paper towel in the quarters and I dampen a corner of it so that you can wipe off but do not do all the practicing and then try to wipe it I want you to do the section here and wipe it as you go because it's wonderful this multi-surface paint is wonderful because it has a sealer in it and that sealer is meant to stay on surfaces. So please wipe it off as you go. Now, we will go to this and practice and look at this as we're doing our lesson today. But one of the key elements here also are the little dotted lines that show you the arrow of which way you should go. And if you're a lefty, I might guide you to start where we end and end where we started. All right, but all you left-handed people have adapted to the right-hand world all in different ways. So that's my little hint for the day. And let's get started. All right, now we don't need a pattern because what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the flowers and I have a method to laying them out and I'm looking for a triangle. So let's look at this really quick before we get started. All right, so I like to have a triangle of color. Now these are all about the same size on this one. Sometimes it's the large full flower, a half a flower and a bud. See the bud? And so um, what I did, I did these and the triangle here, I used another color just because we're doing a mixed color, but I did do a full rose, 
a half of a rose and little buds over here. So I'm moving this color around and you'll see that happen as we go here. I am going to start with the, the uh, dioxazine purple flower and we're using we're getting to a lavender soft pastel shade there and a lot of these I tone them down with one stroke you're blending a darker color you'll see me do that with a lighter color and that's how we get these shades and then I'm able to get other shades of that purple to accent when I'm doing this and one thing also many people say that in the inside they wanted to put um, white and have just the tips of color but but see even with the white I needed a blue to give me my my depth so that's a real important step here is that the yellow ochre is right there and what we're going to do is use the wicker white on the outside so you have depth same thing with the pink all right so let's get started doing our loading and the first thing that we're going to do is pull out my double loader now what we have on the double loader we also have a lid that you can put on here instead of the foam plates but i'm all ready for you here and i'm going to talk to you about the colors i have in here and after i squeeze the colors out they're going to look like that i like to tap and make the paint go out and i usually just tap it one hard time but i'm trying to be graceful on tv <laughs> okay so here we go now let's talk about these colors inside here um, and it's wonderful because what we're doing is we have a divider so that we can double load. And so I put the colors next to each other that I'm going to use in, in each flower. So dioxazine purple is here with the white and then the magenta we double load with the white. I will also maybe put out some more white for the other colors we have here. But over here I with the green colors I have citrus teal and I'll remind you of these as we pick them up and wicker white so the wicker white is going to be used with these colors and then here is Prussian blue and you'll be using it there I put it extra there in case I need it and then the yellow o ochre it will be the um, the yellow flower rose okay so I also use the center and that's where I put floating medium so we're going to put floating medium so it doesn't run all into our paints. And let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to go right here to my teaching guide. The first color I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to start with a wet three quarter inch brush and I dry it off a little bit. Now, when you first use this brush, you're going to have to rake it. Can you hear that? You're going to rake it in your brush caddy to get the sizing out. So it's going to be stiff. I've had many people say, but it's stiff. <laughs> but that's just the sizing to keep it from, um, keep it nice until you start using it. Okay. And people ask me all the time about washing this. You can just wash this with dish soap and water. It's really um, wonderful to use. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to come in between here. Now, I'm going to decide how much purple I want and how the di dioxazine purple and the wicker white. And you can split it right in half. You can split it where it's, if I want it really dark purple, I could get three-fourths purple, one-fourth wicker white. You decide. So let's start here and do a little bit more than half into the dioxazine purple. Then I'm going to come over here and work it in. I'm going to push really hard and work it in really good. All right. And I'm pushing it hard and going fast. I got more paint. I'm not doing that to be quick. I'm doing this to get the paint inside the bristles. Because when we're doing our strokes, this brush will split open and it will be, it won't go smooth for you. So you need more paint than you can imagine. Okay. Then most people go, ah, oh, that's so much paint. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more white because I don't, I want it shaded, not so much dark, right? Now uh, let's pick up, look, you can just dip some. You notice this was split here and here it's not split. That's an important note that sometimes people don't catch that we're doing. 
All right, a little bit more white. Now, now what I've been doing, I forgot to tell you here, the first couple of times I did it really pressured and quick. Now I'm just getting the paint on the surface to look like I want it. All right, so the floating medium, you will know as you're working here if you need floating medium, but let me show you now so you know ahead of time. If I have an edge, or if this just isn't moving, it should feel like butter when it's moving, I will dip straight into the medium, not all the way, just tip it in there, go one, two, three, and you're ready to paint. Now, if you have this loaded with paint, which this will happen, and you are still getting a dry edge, it depends on your surface, it depends on many things. But if one little edge is, is dry and you have plenty of medium and all, just put that corner of that edge and touch and, and flatten it. And when you start painting, it's like miracle, it fixes it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna come right here and practice. Now remember what I said, we're gonna come right here and see, look, my color's good, look at that. All right, so we're gonna wipe it off and then I'm gonna practice. So here's my straight line to start. I can just go one, two, three, get it going here, but it's already blended because we blended it in the palette. And then I'm gonna follow that stroke slowly the first time. So if you're, if you're saying it's not working for me, look at this, you're on top of the teacher's stroke right at home with you. That's the beauty of my reusable teaching guides. And then we stand up, all right? So you're gonna wipe this off and you can practice again. Now, let me tell you another little key that's gonna help you. You cannot lay this brush down like this and get a good stroke. You've gotta stand the brush up. Now I practiced a few times, so let me come back over here and get some more paint. Now sometimes, you have so much paint in here, you can just go right here, which I do, and pick up what's in there. All right, so one more time. You're gonna practice the handle, the brushes up. So the bristles are doing the work, do you see that? So if I have a, if you go really slow, you can feel the movement, but it looks better when you go quicker. But at first, that's how you're gonna learn the movement, all right? Now that's gonna happen all through here. Now the next thing we did was we're gonna come down here. Let's get some more paint. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna start up here. And then as I lift, I can lean it in sometime and get a little curl on there. And you see that I did that in a few places. But we're going up here and we're just layering these all the way around, all right? And here's one that's all finished for you. So what we're gonna do is go around and put each of our different kinds of flowers on there as we go. And when I did the little purple little bud, you can see here, I did that with a 12 because I made them small. I didn't use a bit large brush still, but let's get going. Mostly what I think is important is when we're putting um, a bud on there, I want you to usually stroke your flower, go put your bud, but I put those later because they were with a different size brush. All right, so I'm gonna come over here, not straight in the middle. I wanted it to look like a cluster of flowers. So here's the middle. And so I can start on this side of the middle. Now I'm going to make you feel a little bit better if you wanna, if you wanna do this. One of the things you can do is take and make just a chalk circle and stay within there. I can decide I want my pink one here and then my yellow one here. So that's my triangle of design is where I started. I ended up putting the blue, light blue, and then I made these, this one, cause I need a balance here. See, there's another triangle, this triangle, and then I can come over here and this was Still a nice size, but this was a side view. All right, so that helps us to get going first thing because as I'm stroking this, I am seeing the shape I want, how much white I want to show. I want a little bit more purple over here so I can go back around. See how I can work the purple out? 
and then I lost a little bit of white, so I can just tip the edge white and then restroke. So anything you don't like, almost always with one stroke, you can pick up more paint and not wipe it off. Unless you pick up black and it's a white edge or something, okay? All right, so just turn it around. People always ask, can I turn my project? Of course you can. Sometime on video, I can't. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now, I did come in here on some of these and just want it to be a little bit different, so I pulled white. You see how I did that? I'm here, and then I stand up on the chisel. That's the chisel. And then I make a little curve. And I chose to do that to a few because I thought it added to it. All right. Now, I am a little bit darker here, but then I'll just be a little bit darker with the accent little liners that I put in there. Now, let's take our 12, and we're going to pick up um, the Dioxazine Purple and Wicker White. And I'm going to work it up here on the edge of the division here because if I'm in the middle, it's going to make it all muddy. Picked up a little bit more white, a little bit more white. Okay, now we're ready. So we, I dampened this brush again, laid it on paper towel before I got started. Now what's going to help you right here is we're going to lay this here to see if it's the right color. That purple's a little dark, so I took a little bit of that off. And then... Right here, we're going to push down and stand up for these little buds. Push, pressure, and lift. And then the pressure and lift was here, and it had the little green script liner calyx, which we're going to do a little bit later. All right? So we're going to wipe this off as we go, remember. Okay? And I put chalk here for three spots where the I'm going to have that half flower, and you can see a couple little flowers, and then down here is where I'm going to pull the, the purple. All right? So I'm going to... Push down, just like we just did, and stand up. And I just need that to look really pretty because at the base, it's going to be covered with calyx, all right? And we have three, again, my triangle, all right? So I look around, decide if I want any of the purple flowers anywhere. The only thing that you could do on here is it might be easier for you if you're not really comfortable is to go in there with a 12 this is a little trick you could do is come in here and do some of that in here. But it looks good even if you don't, so that's just an option. All right, so let's look at what comes next. Um, we have these little blue flowers. I'm going to wait and do these filler ruffled bipedal flowers um, a little bit later because I want to flip this over, and let's look at the next flower we're going to do. I also put the little spray here at the bottom. I put this right here so you can kind of see up close um, what's going to go there. But let's go to our cabbage rose. And this is was like an open rose. And all these centers, if you remember, all these centers I'm going to put in and the detail at the end of my flowers, okay? So we're just going to do all the outside petals first and then fill the pretty centers, make a big difference on what your roses and flowers look like. So let's go to the three-quarter inch flat again. And we are going to make sure it's dry on the paper towel. And... Here is this blue, and it looks black, right? So I'm going to pick up a lot of white, so two-thirds white, one-third Prussian blue. All right, now what's wonderful about this blue is you can get this blue all the way to a powder blue, like really light. All right, so a little bit more. There we go. Wicker white and Prussian blue. Nice colors. Now let's go see if that's the color we want it to be. All right, so I'm gonna come right here and just stroke. See if you're happy with that. You make sure that you get it to the color you want it to be and make sure you're happy. Now this will beat up sometime depending on if I left a little bit of water into my brush. But we're gonna wipe this off and then we're ready to do our strokes. Now this stroke is a little bit different. The last one, we didn't actually do a strong wiggle. We just did a light wiggle. Now right here, we're gonna go one, two, three, get ourselves going. Remember, we go really slow, 
just to fill in, handle the brush straight up and down. And doing it that way is not the best looking way, but that way you get yourself ready. Then you can go right back here and then move quicker. And so when you go like this, it's this movement. Like you're scrubbing the floor, but slow. So don't have a nervous shake. I have people that do this nervous shake. All right, so we don't want a nervous shake. We want it to be a nice, loose stroke. All right, so I go right back into where I, my loading spot. And I'm going to go, I start one, two, three. I start moving back and forth. And then I pull. All right, so that's what we're going to do, go, do here. And what's beautiful, what you're going to see, is that we map it out for you. One, two, paint by numbers. <laughs> but it's not like true paint by numbers, but it does number the strokes for you. So you can get going with that and know what to do next. All right. So one of the things I like to do is even come over here and follow this. So I'm doing my outside strokes all the way around. All right, one, two, three. You see I moved over here. And then I go back over here and do four, five, six. Or I can do five and then six. All right, now see it's beating up just because I don't have a lot of paint on here. If you have a little bit more paint, you don't have that problem. All right, so then what happens after we do these outside petals? We're going to put the inside one. So we went five, six, now seven. Seven's going to give you the bud. And you can practice right here first. Okay, and then put the second stroke of the bud. And you can see through this guide. You can see through it to see it. But I like to come over here right next to this, dip a little bit of white so you can see this. And there's our second stroke. And then I'm going to show you on our piece as I add the next layer. But get some scrap paper. I use cardstock and sit there and paint on that. But what's really, if you want to see after you practice here a little bit, then you'll see your progression. Okay, guys. So now I came in here and I added more dark so you guys could see. But what I need to do is... Look, I messed this up. This is a good note. I did that on purpose just to show you what to do. <laughs> I'm going to come over here, wipe it. I'm going to come right here, pick up more. And then let's just come right in here. The inside, this is the key I like to share with you when when you do pick up the wrong side, uh, paint on the wrong side, is that um, then you think you've got to go and wash it. Please don't go wash your brush unless it's a color you're never going to get out. Just take the color inside, still good. So I come to my paper towel, wipe it off, and then pick up fresh paint. And then I'm going to mix it again by blending it again to get back to my original color. All right, are you with me? There we go. All right, now I want this really light blue. So I'm going to turn this so it's comfortable, comfortable for me, and I'm going to face it. Some of these two are looking straight up. This is kind of looking up, but this one's to the side and this one's heading down. So whichever way the center bud faces, uh, you can face it down, up to the side. I'm going to face it out as it's coming around. All right, so I'm not going to push down hard. I'm going to, here's my center. I'm doing this with a three-quarter because it makes the petals nicer. And I'm going to let it go down over the edge here. And I'm going to, this one's going to go over the purple blossom a little bit, even though it didn't originally, and that happens sometimes because we don't use an exact pattern. Now, you want to make sure you have enough blue that when I come in here, watch what's happening here. Now I'm just dipping white, flattening the brush, and I'm ready to go. Now when I go to the palette, that's what I'm doing each time, okay? Now what was next is you look over here because we did the outside petals. Now we want to do seven and eight. So I'm going to go from this line to this line, and I'm going up slightly instead of straight down, okay? 
See, the white has to show. And if the white doesn't show, I just tip it a little bit more, guys. There we go. And then I pick a little bit more white to do the next stroke, which is going to come in to, it's a U. See the U? It comes in to there. And so look how it looks like it wraps. Isn't that fun? All right, so now I can dip, work it into my palette again. And now I'm going to start right here, right on this edge. And do the next petal. And we keep coming around. All right, we'll do another one. So I'm not pushing hard. I'm staying up on the chisel so that you can see the layers. I'm going to come right here, or you can go right next to it. Right here and here. There we go. So see how we've got that nice layer. And now the last one, you still have to use the same brush. You, I tell you, don't go down to that 12. It makes a prettier, lighter petal if we do not go to smaller brushes, okay? So I'm going to start right here. I'm leaning the white out, and I slowly come across. All right? So lean the white out and come across. Now see, look at my handle. As I'm, I'm here, and then I lean this, look, my handle goes down. So the white, um, the white is coming across. So I go left, right, and then I can come right under here and put the last stroke. Now, I don't, that stroke's not showing as well as I would like to, so I'm going to come right back with white again. There's no mistakes. So we just come back in here and add a little bit more. And I can even add one more little stroke back there. All right, so there's our blue, all right, and I filled in with these little light blue flowers next, and those, um, let me see, do I have a little rosebud? Oh, I do have a couple rosebuds right down here, and the rosebuds, I'm going to come with the same brush. All right, I'm feeling a little pasty. All right, so when that happens, it's because I'm under the lights, because it's usually fine, but when this happens... I'm going to go into a little medium and just work it in. You want that butter feeling, smooth like butter. All right, so let's come in here and let's put a couple little rosebuds with this brush as we go. All right, I came right in between here. And you practice it right here, a little bit of a wave, and then in here. See, you don't see. You don't see the blue in the center, so I, gotta get, I have to get a little bit more blue. There we go. See that? And then I can come right in here and put the center. Now, because this is real tight here, I'm not putting many layers there. But I want to do the right, exactly what I want to see, this little rose right here, I'm going to do next. So we're going to come right here, and they're kind of trailing down. So we have one, two, Get some fresh white. Two. Let's look at our. Let's look at what we did. Then we're going to do one more. See how I keep looking at it. It's real important for you to put it right so you see it. And then we're going to lay this on the side and lay this on the side to finish that up. Now what I want you to see is that this is a really small bud, and I'm using a three quarter, but I'm not pushing down like I did over here. All right. So the larger the brush that you do your strokes, the more, the lighter that the stroke um, flower petals look. So that might be confusing to you, but that is the truth. Now we're going to go, because we're doing smaller petals, we're going to go to our magenta and our wicker white. And this is the one right here that we're going to practice, all right? So let's go here again to our palette, and we're going to split this brush. I'm going to just go right in the middle, double load it. Double load it, pick up, back and forth really fast, pressure, pick up more white, work it in. Okay, now it's inside the bristles. Now we pick up about three times, but this time I'm just lightly pressured because I'm just blending the surface of this brush. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to try it. 
and see if I like the color. Now, if you look at that color a bit, you think it needs a little bit more white, just like I do. All right, so I picked a little bit more white up. And then we're going to do a light, smooth wiggle. So it's right here. I can start with one. Okay. And then we go, we can turn it around and do two. And we just practice right in here just so you feel comfortable, just like we did last time. Here's two and three in between. And I want individual petals. All right. So all we're doing is one skirt around here. So keep this in front of you so you see the skirt that you're working on. And I'm going to come right here and fit that skirt into this area right here. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger than the purple flower. And you're going to pick up paint almost every stroke, just to let you know. Every once in a while you can do two strokes like I can do two and then come right back here and keep going around and just a little bit of a wiggle don't do a dramatic wiggle like the seashell that we do when we do the typical rose a loose wiggle loose all right so i've gone all the way around like this now see i have a second layer and the key is to make sure you see the first layer don't get so big that you don't see that first layer as you're doing this. All right. So it wet on wet, you go right in here. That means you have to have plenty of paint. So you cover the back stroke. All right. Now that really needs more white. So I picked up a little bit more white. All around. And you might not be that fast when you do it, but that's okay. That um, you'll feel more comfortable the more you do. So I put a little pink butt over here and a pink butt over here. Do you, do you figure out why I want this one here and that one there? Because you're telling me, how do you know where to put the next one? Remember my triangle? I have the buds going here, but when I'm here now, if I put the pink here, and I said, I, if you look at my picture and I had a pink over here, we're going to do this pink a little bit different on this bud. We put a one in the back and then we put one in the front and then we have a little stroke on the side. So that's two or three petals, right? So I'm going to pick up my white and we also want it to be trailing down. So right here near the purple, I'm going to make one and then I put another one over here. And then I'm going to push and lift back just like I did these, but not so big. Let's do that again. Push and stroke down. So we've got a bud there. So if I said I wanted where else do I want one, I don't want to do a couple here again like we just did a couple there. I want to cut and two and have two and three here. It's too much alike. So let's come over here and put one over here so we have the triangle. All right, so right in here, right below the blue, we need that bright pink. And I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. So then I can come right here and overlap. Now you don't see the overlap unless you have enough pink on the underneath. So let me show you, I can go right back over this and make it a darker pink, right? Pick up some fresh white. Now look what happens. Now see, you can see that really well. And then I'm just gonna come on this side and clean all that up by putting another stroke. All right, and when the calyx goes in, it looks really good. So now we're gonna put more yellow in here and then fill it in with some little, uh, little blue flowers that I pulled into the bottom too. All right, so let's wash this brush again. Are you with me? So just turn off the video and practice a little bit and come back to where we're at. And that will make you comfortable after you've watched it through the first time. Then you know what to expect and what's coming next. OK, so let's look here again. Even I want to make sure what brush did I use on that one? Um, here's your stroke. And I used a 12 to do this rose and this 
this is going to have, definitely have a different look, but it's still going to be a cabbage rose. So we're going to come in here. It's a fluffy rose. I need some white, so I'm going to pull my white over here, and I'm going to grab both of them, right? The yellow ochre and the wicker white. So there we go. Let's grab both colors. Let's work it in fast. All right, let's pick up some more and work it in again. Now what we want to do now, I'm going to put more. Now we're just going to go and make the color like we want on the outside of the brush. And I have too much white, so I'm going to, because I picked up the white. I should have just put a puddle of white in there, right? All right, so there we go. Now what's going to happen with, just like with the uh, pink, with this uh, yellow rose is that we're going to have to dip white often. All right. And you notice I don't need medium still. All right. So let's come right here and see, I, it's the same as this one. We went all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and here's some of those strokes we can practice right here for the center. All right, to get you this bud in the center is eight and nine, and then we fill in, we have that second row, then these fillers. All right, right over here, fillers. And here's the bud for this one. All right, the bud is, I did a couple, just a little bit different. All your buds can look like that, or, or all your buds could be little strokes like this. It depends on how detailed you want to be. So let's come right in here, and you have kind of a gauge of where we're going to stroke. And I did go up on this one more, but it's not as easy up on the lip there. So let's just stay down a little bit. I'll pick up a little bit of white. And I just concentrate on getting a nice shape for that outer layer of rose. But rose. Okay, so let's come out here. And see my handles going up and down. I, I make my bristles do the work. So I'm stroking white. And there we go. All right. Now I will, I think I am going to go up over this. So the beauty of with one stroke is you can restroke right over the petal. See, I'm taking it up a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's look at the bud that's going to go in here. So same bud that we've done before, a little bit different. If you see this one, I spun it around into it itself. Now this one, I'm going to um, come right here. Put two lines, and I'm going to go up and over, like I'm going over a hill. And then I'm going to come right back to those same two lines, right here and here, and I'm going to stroke a U. And the key to this is that you see inside, and there's shading there, all right? Now, the next thing we're going to do always is a second row. And I'm going to start right here. And this is tilted. If you wanted it to be straight up and down, you do two rows and then the bud. Okay, so we're going to come right in here. All the way around. So this is a fun project to get started on. And a really pretty one to add as a focal point also in your wall. Because it says, home is my happy place, right? So look, you can practice here for a few minutes because you're going to start on that same line, lean the white, and lift up. Start this side, lean the white, and lift up, and drag the white up underneath the first stroke. And I also might put one again, so it's right, left, right. And you just keep going until you fill up however big your space is. All right. Now that we painted the large yellow rose, let's do the side view of the rose. And it's going to come right over here And before I put in the buds. So there's not a step for this because it is just the petals. So I want you to see... I've got good fresh white and I'm going to put a petal in the back, same petals that you practice and then more white. And then I'm going to come 
right in here and let's do all the petals that would be in the front. And I want to leave room. I'm going to put the center in there peeping out. I might put one more petal over here. Can you see that? Let me turn it so I'm comfortable. And then I can come right in here. I did a little bit of a wave or a wiggle, and then you come back. So right in there is where I put the little center. So see, I've got the yellows here, and then I'm going to put a couple little yellow rosebuds, and they are um, right here, so you can see where they're at, okay? And I'm going to put three, and they're trailing down. So I'm going to put one here. So it's one stroke. Then you can pull another one on the side and another one on the side. So I usually put one, two, three, so you know where they're going to go. And the key is that you stagger them so you don't put a stem right on top of each one that are going to have to overlap. It makes it difficult. Okay, we put in our little stroke right there. And then our next one is we're going to lay it down. And then we do just like the first one. And then we're going to put calyx up along the the sides. All right. So I'm looking in here. That's when I decide do I want to add a little bit more. And at this point, um, a little bit more yellow someplace else, some of that yellow ochre flower. But if I looked at here, I'm tilted. Can y'all see that? So I'm going to, just because of the buds, I might not notice it later, but I might line this up a little bit different, but it's at least as far, right? So I'm going to wash my brush and I am going to put in some more little flowers, but I need my greenery coming in here now. So the green's going to go in, the tills and the citrus and all the pretty yummy cobblers are going to come in here. And then I'm going to come back. If you look at this, let's look at it again. And I want you to see that all that comes in. And then we put these little flowers on top, kind of. All right, all in here before we fly spec it. So look, we have transparent shadow ghosty leaves here on the sides. And don't, I'm, I don't want to forget this spray here because that really kind of set it off. But at first I started up here, guys, and then I had some trailing leaves and vines. And then I thought I want a little bit more. And then I wanted a little spray here. But just remember, you can always put... Um, a year established or whatever down here. So you make that decision. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in here and put the little leaves filling in in between. And then I end up with these little dabs that are going to be fun. And they deepened it and brightened it. Does that make sense? Okay, so to get started on our leaves, let's look at our colors. We've got citrus green and teal. And every once in a while, Sometimes I add little bits of blue, and it's still in the green family. It looks really nice. So I'm focusing on these two, mostly teeny bit of white occasionally. Lots of floating medium. Worker white floating medium will be added occasionally. All right. So if you're looking at our teaching guide, which is the first thing we're going to do, is we have all these different types of greenery that we're going to do here along with the calyx. So if I'm, I'm going to use my script liner for some of this and mostly my 12 flat. So with the 12 flat, we're going to go here and pick up our colors and I've dampened my brush, laid it on the paper towel. I'm going to pick up the two colors and I'm going to work them in. All right. So a little bit more teal on the side. And I'm going to get a little bit of medium. And then from then on, I keep coming over here and get a little bit, working it in. And if I add white, I'm the wicker white, I'm going to put the wicker white on the citrus green, the lighter edge. See that? See how that makes it pop? All right. And I don't want it to be heavy, heavy. So I'm going to go back again to some medium. And I'm not doing the ghost leaves or shadow leaves yet, but I still want it a little thinner. All right. So the first thing is I came around here and I might even cover some of those. To start with, we're going to come right here and slide along here. So watch the handle. I'm going to make sure I like the color on different ones, whatever color we're using this one. 
and we're going to slide this one and push this down and slide. So you don't want it skinny. You want to touch, put pressure, slide, and release pressure to the tip. So when we're coming over here, we're pushing down and standing up. So it's just a slide. So push, slide to the tip. Pressure, uh, release. Pressure, release. So you practice that, and then on the chisel, you come in and do the stem. Now, as we do this one, we have a center stem, but this is the same stroke. Push, lift, pressure, release, pressure, release. All right? And then one of these leaves I'm going to do right now, I'm going to pick up a little bit more till on here. And so you'll see that there's two sides like this where we touch and we wiggle slightly and stand up. So the second half, we just wiggle the other side and stand up. So we put two of these together. You can practice right here and then pull the stem into it. So that's the greenery. This, I can use a two-script liner or flat. Usually the liner will do a better job. All right. So I'm going to wipe this off, and let's go play with some of those leaves. So does it feel like you're learning things? You, I'd love it when I asked you, have, have you learned anything today in our lesson? That's my favorite part is seeing you learn something you didn't know and then feeling some success as you're trying to do those strokes, all right? Not trying as you are doing those strokes. A little bit of medium, and then I'm going to come here. This is that little bud right here, the little bud calyx around the bottom, all right? A little bit more. I'm going to come here. There's a little one in here. It is a little transparent, but I did this on purpose. I'm going to come right here. And the calyx are at the bottom of the rosebud or right at the bottom where the stem would come. So I'm going to tip both of those colors. And while I do this one, I might lean and come the other way and make a stem. All right. So let's go right here to the purple. Let's, we'll use the liner for that. And I'm going to pull some of these stems and then we'll get the liner because the liner helps make a really pretty calyx. So this is what we're going to do with that. We're going to take both colors, roll the brush. Now, when, when we do inky work, we're going to get some water and we can roll in that water. But that's about the only time I use water is when I'm doing my calyx. But, um, Many artists think that they can use floating medium for the inky. You can't use floating medium for the inky. It makes it still have the body because the floating medium is the fluff that's inside this paint. So it's not going to get thin on you. It's going to keep its full body on you, but it will dry in different ways that we like. All right. So I'm going to continue stroking through some of this heavier paint and, and then stroke along here. And what I'm going to do is I push or lay it down and stand up. Lay it down and stand up. And I can streak through both colors. All right. You put little curls on the ends of this. And I can come over here. So you can do either type of the liner or with the 12 flat and I prefer to use the chisel edge of the 12 for the stem. Push, lift, push, lift. Okay. Um, but what's going to happen is so, let's pick up and show you that you can do this liner push and then lift so it's pressure release just like I was doing those slider leaves okay guys all right so I am going I might put a few leaves on top after we do all of our dabbing but I do want you to see that when I'm I'm um, trailing some of these little leaves and vines coming down 
I could come in here and this is inky, remember. So I'm gonna come along here. I might pick up a little bit more citrus. No. Now see, it's not moving well, so I really do need some water with this if I'm gonna use a liner. And uh, it's one, it's usually a chisel when I'm doing a stem to the rose. But when I do these little vines, they really need to be inky to script liner. All right. Before I do the curly cues on here, the tendrils. All right. So I'm going to bring this in here. And I stop. And then I can cross across. If I want to use the citrus green, I put a little bit of wicker white. So look how pretty that shows up by doing inky with a wicker white into the citrus. See, now this is just a really loose, smooth stroke. Now I'm going to come back in again with citrus and white, wicker white and citrus green. All right, see this one's faded. You need to really make sure. Sometimes when the white dries and you think you've got a color, I thought that was great, but it went away. All right, I'm putting a little bit of the citrus over here instead of just that darker green. And they're all mixes because I'm blending it with another color. All right. Now, let me show you how to do a curly cue. So I'm taking water and I'm making a little circle here next to my puddle. And you can put this on a foam plate too. There you go. Then I roll it. And I did use a little bit more citrus, but I didn't think it showed quite as well. So what I'm going to do here is take and do some of these little curls in here where I'm going to come down and make a circle and pull. So now watch this happening. I'm going to take my little finger and make wherever I want to go. My little finger's taking me. All right. So I am going to come right here. All right, so wherever the practice, practice, that takes practice, it does. And we'll put a little bit more in here. And it's like a fountain pen, so it just keeps running down. So you really need to make it inky. All right. <clears throat> I am going to end up with a few coming from here. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to the leaves that we're working on because I'd like it right in front of you to remind you. Long slender leaves, let's put a couple of those in. And I'm gonna come back over here to citrus and citrus green and teal, all right? So what I'm going to do is pull a few of these in here. And oops, I forgot a calyx right there. Let's put a couple in here. Did I get them all? Yeah. All right. So we're going to slide on the chisel, push down and slide right here. Chisel, push, chisel. Now this is a little transparent. I want it a little bit heavier. And we put a couple of those in here. And I really like it when you're getting the citrus and the citrus green and the teal at the same time. So you push and it shows and you can pull a stem in it. Okay, so now I do have, let me put another little leaf here. Let's do the, the leaf that's got a wiggle on the side, okay? So we wiggle the side, that's our practice right there. We need the citrus green in the middle and more till on one side 
And we're going to wiggle it on both sides of this. Wiggle. And pull us down. And I did put one over here also. And just slide. It just needs to be a little bit fuller leaf along with the, the slender sliders. Okay, so let's put out a little sap green. And because it's all kind of the same tone, same tone, and we want to add a few shades of that, which I would just side load to the sap with a little bit of medium, sap green. And let's do a couple of these leaves instead of just the teal, because it felt like it was missing something. So we'll just add a little bit of that. All right, and, and we'll add some of that also into our little dabs that we're gonna put. Like this one really needs it because it's just kind of lost in there. There we go. And that one is one like this where it looks like it's two strokes and then the center. Okay, so let's come in here and I put my finger in that. We'll just stroke right back of that. Now, what we want to do at this point is we want to clean this brush out into the medium. So first thing I want to do is I put floating medium in there. So I work that floating medium out and I'm just going to use little bits of this color. And I actually had teal and citrus in a lot of these um, shadow leaves. Okay, now I'm going to, you're going to practice a little bit to make sure that you have this transparent color. See, I want to see through it, so I might take some of it off, and there we are. So we want it really see-through. And I have that trailing from underneath a lot of spots, so it's not a harsh leaf, it's just a little bit of a leaf. And that's that push and slide leaf. Pressure, release, pressure, release. And then make sure with the chisel of this brush, we put a little liner. But I really put it real defined along here. And I did stagger the stroke just a little bit. Where am I? There we are. Look, I have one in between, one in between, instead of one on both sides at the same spot. It's a little bit more like fern, and this is a little vine. Okay, see how delicate that turns out? Just get more medium, and we're just painting with more medium here. So floating medium and our cleaned out brush. Now, over here, I want you to see the difference. I still have a teal side and a light side. By the time I got here, it just kind of looks like it's one color. All right, so I really kind of like having that citrus green in there. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> add that more and grab more floating medium. And there we go. All right. So we're going to come along the stem and add these right down here. Oop. Go over here work it in and because this is floating shadow leaves like floating medium shadow leaves here you can stroke right over until you get what you want all right so that's one part i am also coming down here and knowing that i want to put the flowers in the center here i want you to see that i'm spacing it out so I have room for flower blossoms and room for um, those little dabs. So I just repeat what I do here. And that's still one brush full of paint with floating medium, see? And that will do all of that for you. Okay. 
light and airy. Wash this off. Some of, some of it, like the bottom here, I didn't push down as hard. I made them really little. And the way you make them really little is you don't push as hard. All right. So now let's look and see what's next. We have a couple more steps here on our florals. And besides the little blue blossoms, we are going to do these little dotted garland that falls down from the trails. All right. And it also, look, it fills in there, makes it really rich looking. So what I did first is I usually put a little bit of dark. So let me get put this here. I put a little bit of dark. We're going to put it here. Make sure you see what we're doing. So what we're going to do is pick up the tail on one corner. All right. And so what I'm going to start doing is dabbing. And what I do is I go back and forth like I'm sweeping that on there. But it's really just laying that paint color in there. All right. And I had some right in here. I want it all in that area. And see how much paint I get. I keep going back. Now, one thing that you want to do as you're doing this is you want it to trail. So you leave space in there so we can put some lighter colors, okay? But I'm going to keep picking up. And I'm filling in this area, right? Little sweep. I'm just sweeping the corner. All right. A little bit in here. A little bit in all these, the voided areas where I would normally have greenery. Then I just decided I'm going to fill this in with little dabs. All in there. It's easier to go through and do all one color and then come back and put the other. All right. I did a few that are coming down here. And the best part about this is if you have a leaf out there that you're not happy with, you can come down and cover right over that. All right. A little bit more down in here. A little bit in here. So I put a few more citrus green ones over here with just a little bit of citrus green and white. I did a couple times do that. All right, I'm going to also come down here and try not to get my sleeve in it <laughs> and, and put a few little dots. I got a little big on those. All right. I actually had put citrus green and white in here first and just tapped a few of these on because it needed it. But I'm going to put the dark first and then we're going to come back with the bright green, citrus green on top of this, all right? At this time, I'm going to put a little bit of white. We're gonna dab this, and I'll just have a little bit of white on the other side, so as I dab it and I push down, you might get some of that white showing. All right, so let's come in here now, and it's okay if it blends the uh, teal into it a little bit. Yeah. And that's starting to look really pretty with all those bright colors. I love to have a cluster of flowers swagged right over phrases and family names and pictures. Okay, so we're just dab, 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 dab. You can just kind of get lost into this. It's really fun. Just tapping it. Isn't that starting to look good? And the best part is you can say, look at these flowers I painted. And I want to tell you a little something before we do the centers later. One thing that happens is if you do really good centers, even if your petals aren't perfect, spend time to do them really delicate because just like this, this really adds to anything that you felt like, ah, oh, it wasn't as nice as I wanted that leaf to look. 
See how pretty now. What I what I'm doing when I'm coming in here, guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a lots more citrus green and wicker white and not have it in areas where there's teal. Okay. So what we're gonna do in, in here a little bit is I had a little bit of citrus on my brush, but then I'm just gonna keep picking up white. And with this, I just tapped it down and also just kind of made it cascade a little bit down in here. A little bit in here and there. See, I, I think that really adds to it. So the most exciting thing right now is that you are painting the first piece in your collection. The beginning of the year, a great way to make plans for the year, set goals of, I'm going to learn to do leaves really good. So I like my leaves. I'm going to learn to take my time more and work for a goal. So I want you to think about your goal. It would be really fun to see you paint one a month. It's your goal to take a lesson and paint one a month and put them around in your home or give them as gifts. All right. So we've got all that done, but now what do we need still? If you look at your picture and look at your worksheet, there's two things that we still need to do um, to finish our florals. Is we need this little blue filler at the end and um, our centers of our flowers. All right, so I'm going to take that chalk away so it doesn't confuse us a little bit. All right, so let's do the little five petal flower. And when we practice this on here, it's blue. So I'm going to pick up the Prussian blue and work her white right there. Work it in, work it in. Pick up a little bit more white. All right, there we go. And we can do wet on wet. So practice these flowers and it's just a loose wiggle. And then we go one, to flip over here to C3. You're following the direction of the arrow, which will help you see that. And then this is a profile of one where I have the one, and then I put a second one next to it, and then I come here and do these little chisel strokes. But it shows you exactly which stroke to put on, what, on which stroke, and that's gonna help you see oh that's very easy because sometimes when i say it and you watch it and then you look at this it clears it up in your head oh that's what she meant because sometimes i am so into the painting and i'm like um did i make that clear but then the teaching guide reinforces it so look here it is there's the little petal now i don't want heavy paint do you see that uh it's thin down with floating medium and I just keep going right over here and see how light and delicate that is. Now, a couple of times I picked up a little bit fresher white, but let's do a few more of these that are just pieces, like, like at the end of the vine. See that one? That's this little layered one that we just showed you. All right, and then right here, I have a little one, one little teeny dab. And then another one on top. There we go. So it's trailing. Isn't that kind of fun? All right, let's come over here and it needs something right there. There we go. And when we put the centers, these are gonna, wow, that looks like a fun flower. So right in here, what I wanna make sure now is I touch the white and have a little bit stronger white tip, but it's still kind of faded. And see, it looks yummy when it's kind of in here on top of stuff, on top of stuff, on top of leaves and flowers. All right. And I want to put one there, but it's pretty darn wet right there. So I'm going to come back there in a minute. All right. And then right down here, I did a nice, look, it's a light wiggle. And I'm going to put a center, which makes that, that one stand out. All right, so we have it all in there, except for the one that's drying. And now I want to come right over here and put a few of them in here. And by then, maybe we'll be dry up there. So see, I'm going to do little, just up on the chisel of this brush. The 12 is a great size brush. 
and you can make a large petal or a small petal and um, this will make that happen. All right, so we're gonna keep picking up the blue. And remember, put this right here so it kind of reminds you. It's like the teacher at home with you. Remember, I'm right there with you. There's my strokes. A little bit here, there, and little dabs. And I put one right in here. See, I can do more strokes with this because of the floating medium and the color being really light. A little teeny bit of blue, a little bit of medium. And we put another blossom here. And I had one kind of out this way. So I like it when it's a little bit of a watercolor effect. All right, so what I want to make sure is that I have right in here, I'm going to come right in here with our word. So I'm making sure that I balance that all out. Just little tricks that are going to help you do a better job with your finishing touches. All right, so to finish this part of our process, we're going to do our centers. And there's all sorts of different centers that you're going to see along the way. But most of them are dabbing the tip or the handle of the brush and or the scruffy brush. So let's get our scruffy brush. And with my scruffy brush, what I do is I fluff it first. And I use this dry. So please don't wet the scruffy. Please fluff the scruffy because in the package it's flat. So I, we take it on a paper towel or in your hand and fluff it before we start using it, okay? Now when we look on here, it's going to show that we have citrus green and sap green with a little bit of teal is going to come on top with a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to come right here with our sap. And it's like an, I look at this like an Easter egg, I mean an egg, and we crack the egg in half. The upper half, I do one color, the bottom half not the sides, and don't don't ever dip in the middle of the puddle of paint. Tap, hear that? Tap the out, the edge of the puddle, edge of the puddle. Okay, so the first thing I did was I come around, just like we tapped here, and I, that's not the color I wanted to use. Remember I said I wanted citrus. So let's put citrus and sap. But see, I didn't have to clean it. I can just go right in there. All right. So we're going to tap right in here. I'm going to have the light up. I'm, I'm not going tap, tap. I'm tapping quickly. And then rotate this so it's got the dark on the bottom and the light on the top. All right. Now in this one, uh, let's look and see what I did on the pink one. The pink one, I also show you right here what I did. It's also the same colors on the bottom, but on the top, I'm going to do it a little different. But we want it to look different. So I'm doing this one a little bit smaller and this one a little bit larger. All right. So now I'm going to take my little script liner, number two script liner, and I'm going to start tapping some of these colors. And I even tap those into my buds. All right. So what I'm going to use is I pick up a little bit of teal and I'm going to tap over here a little bit of teal, but let's get a little bit of wicker white with that teal and tap one edge over there. And let's see, am I using that anywhere else? All right. And then I'm going to come in here with yellow ochre. And wicker white. Let's see, make sure. No, um, some moon yellow. We need some moon yellow out there because that we need that little bit of bright to make a big difference. So I'll put it right next to my yellow ochre. All right, that's moon yellow and yellow ochre on the same brush, okay? And so just come in here and tap along here and I like some of that dark showing through, but that just gives you a little bit of light and detail. All right. So on this one, I have more moon yellow and wicker white. And so I can 
put a little bit of that on this side also. Just tap, tap, tap. And sometimes you can go for dots. It depends if you want to dip dot with your handle. And sometimes I do these in these little open flowers that way too. All right, so let's go back to wicker white and teal. And I'm going to start with mostly teal. And then as I push it down, it gets more white. Okay, so I want to keep that shape. But I'm going to come in here and use a little bit more of just the wicker white. All right, so the centers are important, but the thing I want to show you before I move from this guy here is that I am using the script liner and we're using inky dioxazine purple. This is the two script liner, make it inky. And I took and kneaded it this color. I lightened it up before, but I got mine a little bit darker. And the, right here it tells you, right here is where we want to put the little bit of the licorice in there. And see, that needs to be a little bit darker. Can you all see that? It's because I made my flower a little bit darker. I really need this more doxazine purple. So I'm going to come right in here. And we're going to pull those in. You can do that to any flower, but these open flowers look really good that way. All right. All right, so most of the other flowers, um, I'm working more with the moon yellow and some white. And you can um, add some different ones if you want. I, I went around like this and then I came back and every once in a while touched a few little tills, uh, tills, tips in here of the brush, a little bit of teal. But lots of times we're really happy with just moon yellow and wicker white. So in here, it did need some green down in there because it's already a yellow flower. All right, so look, tip, 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 and it looks like little dots. And here, I can do a little bit. And the blue, I just put some white, maybe yellow ochre and white. Just into where it opens up there, okay? And right in these little, little blue flowers. Look, this doesn't look like much, but when we put these little centers in, it pops. All right. So don't they just lighten everything up? This is my fun part <laughs> is when I go back and say, oh, I like that. Let me put a little bit more. Let me change that look. All right. And right down here. Now we're going to do some fun things at the end besides lettering, and that is fly specking, but we want to get our letters on. And each step you need to dry. So um, I'm going to go and show you the lettering, some fun ways to do this lettering and how to make it easy for you. And this will be drying, okay, before we touch it. There we go. All right, there we go. So the one thing I told you is you could take and pick up a little bit of teal, and especially when it's all yellow, a little bit of depth with the teal right here. So it's coming from the center of the flower. I want to put this to the side and then come up with, like I said, it's got to dry, but teach you a little bit about our wonderful phrases that we're going to be putting on our pieces. Okay, I have some fun little tips to teach you about tracing and transferring. Now I showed you how to trace the pattern. So we have our nice little trace project and uh, letters, phrases, whatever we wanted to do, but I don't want you messing this up, remember? So I don't, um, anybody who's painted with me a long time and we don't use patterns, 
maybe you don't know or feel comfortable with how to now transfer this. So I want you to see that I'm going to put this piece right where I want it to be. So let me come right here to show you. Okay, so I come over here and I decide where I want it. See, I looked around on the flowers and I decided, you know what? This is a good placement right here. So then I taped it down. I'm just showing you on here because the other one's wet. I put some painter's tape right where I want it to be and just pretend there's no letters yet. Then I took my graphite paper. And uh, by the way, people say, can you use this graphite paper again? You absolutely can. You just take and turn the shiny side down and you can do white graphite paper, gray, either one. So it depends on what your background's like because gray might not show, but white will. And I slide this here and this is what I want. I want this in a place where I can keep lifting and seeing what it looks like. And this is gonna keep it stable. All right, so the fun thing that um, I was sharing with you earlier is if you have your straight edge and you're tracing this on, you're gonna take and lay this here and I'm not gonna do it on here, I'm gonna do it on another board to show you. But the straight line is gonna make a difference in how it lines up. Look how straight everything is here. It's because we had a template to go by. You have these wonderful Wonderful, different assortment of phrases. And let's find a place right down here. I'm going to go down here and show you. If I come right here and put home there, line it up straight, decide where you want it on your piece, and really take your ruler out, make it really straight. It's very important. And these straight lines, we're not going to put them on here, but they were very important to line up the letters. So look, you're going to put the graphite paper under it. And the first thing that you want to do now that I've learned to do this, <laughs> all right, is I'm going to come right along here and I've got to be over it so I can't see really well unless I'm over it. And I'm going to come along here and put our, our straight lines right here. I can see this. All right. So right underneath each letter, I have a nice straight line to get started. Okay. And then I even used it to do some of the upward lines to make sure those were straight. Okay, so I'm just going to come here and here. Slide it down here and there. All right, so that gives you less possibilities of air error but the thing that's really important is that you take your time and enjoy the process see all my straight lines the process to me made a big difference in what my work looked like because I'm going to show you how simple it is after you get it all traced into place see so this is going to come up down straight across and up and then I can keep seeing because sometimes I forget where I was. Yeah, so see how that's starting to line up. I've got the bottom and my E's all done. Looks like an F though, but this is an opportunity to fix that. I can come right across here and now look at what it is. Okay, so, so it's all there. So the most important thing that I tell you at this point, remember that this is going to be the last beautiful part that you put on your plate. And remember, when you're doing that, take your time. Don't be painting really quick and sit down and go, I got to make this happen tonight. All right. And I'm telling you that and because of experience. All right. So enjoy this. Learn how to do it. Enjoy doing it. So what I want to share with you now is that we're going to take and make some gray, which is let's put out some um, licorice and we didn't need much licorice and we want a little bit of white but we are going to use that licorice for outlining too and then over here we have the citrus green with a little bit of wicker white and i'm going to make some more wicker white because I, that's probably going to be gray over there 
All right, so I'm going to float some wicker white in here just a little bit. And, you know, Chris Williams has taught me a lot of shading and ombre and different. Um, I tell her sometimes she's done things that look like flames. And she laughed at me, but it was during a Thanksgiving look. And she was doing some really pretty, like, it just brought the piece alive. And I think she just has it innately, knows how to do that. But watching, I learned, I'll never be that good at it. But, you know, wouldn't you be happy? I know y'all feel this way about me. Oh, Donna does one stroke better than I can do it. Well, I've had a lot of experience, and that's how you get better, more, more practice. Okay, so the last thing I want to add on here, let's put some Prussian blue out. So do you believe all those colors are in there? <laughs> but when you're all done, there's even more variations of it, right? All right, so let's get our two script liner. And the first thing I did, I'm going to turn it at an angle so I can get to it easy. But I'm going to move it around so I'm going to be able to get to the shades I want. And the first thing I want to do is make my gray. Remember, you just touch a little bit at first and then slowly add. Now, I want it darker than my background. Your, this, this background is way darker than the original. So all you have to do is shade it to get a color you like. See that? And then you need to make a whole puddle of that. But we only have one letter, so we'll be fine. All right? But when you're making your puddle, I would do that whole puddle. All right? So it's inky. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is that is not dark. And see if it's dark enough. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's make it. Almost licorice, but not quite. Roll it. All right, I really want you to be able to see. Okay. We're going to come right here. And I want you to see I did the line at the top, and I boxed it in. This one came a little bit more because I practiced trying two colors on there. All right, so see how we just go across here. Now I'm going to come straight down here. One of the ways you can do this is you you get a steady spot where you want it, and you just pull your little finger. And especially if I have shakes when drinking caffeine or something, then I need to steady with my finger. Now look, this is a liner. I can push it down and just pull it now. And you fill it in. Okay, I want to show you because I do get shaky sometimes. I'm going to take my 12 flat and I want to keep it thin with water. And so look, I can come right here because we have this wonderful paint. <laughs> that has a sealer in it underneath here, and I can just clean this up, all right? But I have to have a paper towel by me and just go to the paper towel and wipe it off, okay? See, it's just easy to clean, but don't use Q-tips, don't. You need the straight edge to do that with, okay? All right, so I'm gonna come across here and I'm gonna get the right pressure and pull across, but I do usually do two times. Now, one little hint that's really important, guys, think about this because it's really important. Um, what happens is if you are trying to cover, I got a little ridge there. If you're trying to cover in this area and you want to cover that line, try to stay right inside of the line because we're going to outline and shade also. But when you go to fix it, you can then, on the second stroke across there, you can fix something and not keep growing, all right? We don't want you to grow so big that it gets way out of control. See how we did the box at the top? We're going to pull this straight down, over, and across, all right? You can make these really strong square. I can come across here and fill in now. Okay, fill in the top and the bottom. Oops. All right. 
And now I'm going to lay the brush down and pull straight in. All right, you heard my little oops. <laughs> my tip of my brush touched the side. Okay. Now, what I want to do is work on the O here because the next step to do, this is already base coated and dried. Now, the next step is to outline shadow the side of the letter. So, on this one, I'm shadowing all the left sides of those downward strokes. All right. So, I'm going to get inky licorice. The Prussian blue and licorice look a lot the same. So ink, inky licorice, we've got water, we're making a circle, we're rolling the brush. You don't want watery and you don't want pasty. Inky, see that? Roll it out and you have a nice, it's like a fountain pen, it just runs down. All right, so with this O, we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna slide our little finger down so it takes it with us. Now I can come right here, a little bit heavier, and lift as I come around. All right, so same thing here. We want to start little, and then we push down, and then we stand up, 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 up to the tip. All right, so that's all you have to do, but I want you to see that we do the bottoms of all this, and so I would come right here on the bottom. All right, see just the bottom and just the inside on the left side. Here we go. All right, so that's fun and it just makes a huge difference. And sometimes I've used two. I put gold on one side and the licorice on the other. All right, now let's do the happy because it's gonna make me happy to have my lettering done, right? So I'm gonna make it a little bit, little touch of water, not much. But please don't use paint that has a, a film on the top because it's going to take away from you having a successful job of this. So look, I'm going to come down and outline because this is a little bit thicker. Do you see that? It's a little bit thicker um, letter. All right. And you're going to feel like a sign painter when you get through with this, an artistic sign painter. All right. So I'm going to come around here and up and fill this in, okay? I do want to cover that line a little bit now because I've got most of it done. All right. Now, see, I already have finished this on the other side. See how easy if you come around the letter and down the other side. Now, I do remember that I'm shading the top with some light color and shading the bottom of the letters with a darker color. So you can keep th thinking about that a little bit if you're worried about one little spot that's not perfect. At least I do. And then we come back up and we're gonna fill right in. There we go. And to me, this got really lumpy on this side, so I'm just going to pull right down with the water and get a nice clean edge, okay? Now, what we're going to do now with our 12, we're going to go to this next letter. And what I did with this letter here is I'm going to have a little bit of a dampened brush, but not not totally. I, I dried it off a little bit. Okay, dried it again because I don't want a whole bunch of water. Now what's going to happen with this teal as I'm coming along here, if I come around here first and here, all right, and then I can take and pull up little bits up teal in here. Now you might feel like you're going to do better with some floating medium because the floating medium would be on most of the brush and it would, if it, if it overlapped, it would just be medium over there. 
and it wouldn't take away from it. All right. Now I am going to let that dry a little bit and go up here to the white. So let's get a little bit of floating medium. This is what was easier for me. All right. And that's not a little bit, is it? It's a little teeny bit of floating medium on a clean 12 flat wicker white. All right. All right, so you see it's just right there on the tip. All right, so as we come across here, we're just going to take and bring a little bit of white there. But you know what? I found that if I put a little bit of citrus and then white, there's different ways you can do it. You can do it all one, but I wanted this to blend in a little bit more. You see that? And then I'm going to come along here and it's over. It's okay if it overlaps into the middle because it's floating medium during that part of it. All right. So there we go. All right. You make it a little stronger, a little tiny bit stronger. Or you like it light. You can do it either way. All right, so it did come down and darken the tip a little bit more for the bottom. But I'm going to now show you that this is, I put black first, but it was blue, the Prussian blue. All right, and so on this one, we're on the left side of it. And we're going to come right in here. Prussian blue. Okay, and I want to thin it or I can get a teeny bit of white so it doesn't look like licorice. All right, just a little bit is what I found look better. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go on the left side. So I'm going to bring it right along there, stop, and it would then come in here, right? So on this side, I'm going to come right down here and come back up same thing here we're going to come right here and do the left side so when you're all done look how fun that looks all right so now we're going to transfer that to our piece and i want you to see the finished lettering let's look at real close now after you've seen how this happens so see how these are all blocked they're on the side a little bit of script all licorice but you do the same way that we did this and then um so we're pairing these different fonts together then this the blue just came on the left side of everything you see that all right now you notice something different? We shaded some gray in here. Didn't go on top of the flowers, but we did it right along here. That gave it depth when we took the picture so you could see it better. And then a little bit of the floating medium and gray tones on the outside also. And then this little fly specking is so much fun. So let me show you how that's going to make this just all a finished touch. All right. Now, on here, remember the lettering is going to go there, so I can wipe that off for now. And I'm going to sit when I can when we're done here, and I'm going to take my time <laughs> and do my lettering that way. All right, let's get, oh, I know why I had all that floating medium right here. All right, so I'm going to come in here and pick up those gray tones with lots of floating medium. Now, look what happens. I'm... I'm going to go just all around here. See that? Lots of floaty medium. And remember, if you have a terry towel or if you have a paper towel with you, if you feel like, oh, I just didn't like that, I really got carried away, you can just wipe it. See that? Because we have a sealer in the paint. This multi-surface paint is wonderful. It became my very best favorite friend in the painting world, all right, because I can have the same paint and just paint all kinds of glass, metal, ceramic, canvas, whatever I wanted to paint with, and I didn't have to go get another set of paint. Even though we have other wonderful paints, that made me happy. 
All right. So you decide how heavy you want that. See, what's good is that you can then come back with the same brush and wipe some of it off if it got more than you wanted it. Sometimes I like to take a sponge and just hit the, the shading on the outside side here. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more on this side. The last little fun thing is do fly specking. And this is so fun. When I'm doing winter stuff, I, I put um, it white like snow. When I do the ocean, I do white like foam. So let me show you what happens here. Um, I am going to dip my toothbrush. And I like the stiff toothbrush is better when I'm using um, my toothbrushes. I do soft, but see this? You flick it and it just covers it really nice, but you don't want it too watery because when the water hits, it'll just blur. And um, I don't want it on me and I don't want it on anything else. <laughs> so you might want to put paper under here, but I want you to see that start out light. I always start on something else so that I make on oh, paper or whatever, make sure I'm liking it. But this is that gray mix, because I thought it would look good with what we're doing. But the licorice would be nice, too. See, so you could go up to it. Now, this is pure taste, whether you like it or not. Some people say, I don't want to mess mine up. And I went, no, 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 it's just a pretty accent. So it depends on if you like that look or not. All right, so just around the edges. Now this is the gray mix. So now let me show you if I get it a little bit more licorice. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna look like. See a little bit? So look, I can put just, I really liked it when it, a little bit more it was in there of the dark. Okay, but don't go overboard. That can happen too. Now what I love about this fly specking is it's a beautiful finishing touch. Now I'm gonna let mine dry and I'm gonna then add my laddering to it. Well, I enjoyed that class and my favorite part was teaching you one of my favorite flowers and that's roses. Four different roses and all the buds to go with it. Some fun little leaves that we did and just embellishing it with those letters and words are going to be so fun when you start doing yours. But I want you to relax and enjoy the process as you do it and that's what I need to work on taking my time because I do lots better when I do. I also want to invite you to our Facebook community where you can go to Let's Paint with Lad, and I would love for you to share your pictures of what you have accomplished. And to do that, please use hashtag Let's Paint Challenge when you share your photos. So what we want to talk about next is I am going to do something so fun next month. In February, I'm going to teach you a farm landscape and we even put a barn in it. So doesn't that sound fun? I will see you next month and in between, paint, paint, paint.